This Veterans History Project interview is being conducted on July the 10th in the year 2017 here at the Niles Public Library. My name is, is Neil O'Shea, I'm a member of the reference staff, and I'm privileged to be the coordinator for the Veterans uh, History Project. I'm speaking with Mr. Michael A. Toscano. Uh, Mr. T Toscano was born on Veterans Day, yeah. November the 11th, uh, 1947. And that was in Chicago. Right. And he now lives in Niles. Uh, Mr. Toscano learned of the Veterans History Project through his attendance at the Vietnam Veterans Group that meets Dunkin' Donuts on Dumpster. Yeah. Do you meet all the time yeah, there? Yeah, every, every Tuesday, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. How long have you been meeting there? I've been there probably about two years. Wow. They started off with four guys. Now it's almost, they're done. There's 20, there's 20 now. We got another guy last week, but they're all not there all the time. All the time. Yeah. And Mr. Toscano has uh, kindly consented to be interviewed for this project, and here is his story. Um, Mr. Toscano, um, is it okay if I call you Mr. Toscano? Or yeah, that's fine. Sure. So, Mr. Toscano, um, do you recall when you entered the service? Yes. Do you want to know the... Sure, sure. Okay. Is in your mind I, I, oh, I, can, I, I remember more about the military than I do about anything else. In 1965, I graduated. In 19, later on, they had the buddy system. You went, like, Neil, you and I went down and signed up for the buddy system. I ain't going to give his last name, but George was his name. Him and I signed up for August 20, I think it was the 20, it's on there, August 22nd or something, I can't remember when I went in, 66. Yeah, 22nd of August. Maybe. See, I remember that. Very good. Um, so, may I ask what high school you attended? That was West. Niles West, so you were right local, here. I was man, in Niles. local man all the way. Right. And uh, at that time, you didn't have a draft number, did you? They didn't, no. they didn't have the numbers at that time. No, I think, they probably wouldn't have went out. I enlisted. Yeah. But that's, I said, we went on the buddy program, and my buddy didn't show up. <laughs> so, uh, um, were there a lot of your friends that, that enlisted? Yeah, I had... that I went to high school with, I'm going to say four of them that, that uh, never made it back. Mm. That I went to, you know, that yeah. I graduated with. Yeah. So you graduated in 1965, right. and then a year later you decided... Well, I just thought I was, you know, I'm only 17, <laughs> and you know, joined the Marine Corps, this That's George cool. talked me into it, but he didn't show up, and I yeah. just said, oh well. Yeah. Was there a tradition of military service in your family? My dad was uh, uh, Army Air Corps in uh, World War II. How did Okinawa. he feel about you? Uh, Okinawa, did you say? Yeah, he was out. Yeah. How did he feel about you joining up? Didn't really, you know. Were you an only child or yeah. only son? So was my dad. Wow. So um, it, that. So you were, after you graduated from high school, were you working or anything else at that time or considering and going into a line of work? I, I was, I was working off and on, you know, I just got out of high school and I wasn't sure I wanted to do this and that. And, yeah. And uh, I just... And there wasn't an ROTC in high school or no, anything like that, no. yeah. So, so you enlisted and uh, you chose the Marines. Yeah. I... Yeah. Well, you know, I was 17, and I thought, nah, the Navy, nah. I don't know why. I, I can't remember why George and I. Yeah. I remember when I was young, there'd always be those really uh, exciting, inspiring stories of World War II, and a lot of times they were Marines, you know, and then uh, I was thought the, I the Marine Corps hymn sounded so good. It just, I, 
I, I, I really, I really yeah. can't remember why. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like the movies that yeah. that brought me in. I just thought, the, and plus it was only two years. See, everybody else, they were trying to arm me and all of them trying to talk me in the four years. And I go, now, I says, I went in the guy for four years, and I go, nah, I says, what do you, I'll go to the Army. He goes, oh, we got a two-year program. So I went in for two years. Yeah. And then you were inducted? Uh, Down in, I think that was Sal. Oh, Sal. I think it was Sal. And then did they send you? To San Diego. You went straight to San Diego? Straight to San Diego. Was that by train or plane? or? It was a plane. Yeah. It was a plane. And, uh, I think it was Continental. Was that your first time away from home for any length of time? Yeah, it wasn't. It was the great adventure. It was a great, you know, not as what I thought it would be, and it was. <laughs> yeah. So, um, was basic training was that? Uh, it was that San Diego? Was that difficult? As I always say. To yeah, it was. You know, when you're, you're seventeen, you're away from home and. These guys, they didn't let, because it was, Vietnam was going, they didn't let any slack. And it was, it was pretty nasty. Were you in pretty good shape when you went in? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I was, you know, I was in real good. I mean, I was even better shape when, you know. Yeah. How was the, uh, were there any uh, famous, famous uh, drill instructors or? No. They were just, they were just nasty. <laughs> they were bad. Well, you're going to, you know, you're probably getting shipped to Vietnam. You know, I mean, at that time, you wouldn't know. But, you know. But you probably had an idea you might be going to. No. Vietnam. You no, didn't know. No. No, you had to go through all the, the tests, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like. Uh, so that lasts for about six weeks or? I think it was. It's probably in there, probably in that one piece, the, the second, the, the other one. I should going tell you. That's the one, I think. On this one? Yeah, it'll tell you right there. Shit at the top. I think it was... Oh, San Diego, yeah. You right. were, yeah, you land up there on the 23rd of August, and then it says on the 22nd of October you're transferred. Well, see, you had to go to ITR. When you got your MOS... That was your motor specialty. Your it was your MOS was your your? Uh, I was artillery. So did they when did they, when did you get assigned or did you, you know get the artillery? You got that when you left boot camp. After boot camp, you went to Camp Pendleton. Well, I was fire directional control, and I'm going. No, I you know it's like looking at a a grid map like that map, and then you'd have to you had to do. Uh, Algebra, calculus, and I don't know how I passed everything. I wasn't, I was like a, a good, you know, C plus student in algebra. So we ended up getting on the guns, and that's where we got trained uh, on artillery. You know, they gave you like there's mortars, and there's 105s, and 55s, five and there's 55 five self propels. And that's October, that, that October date is probably right because it was like six weeks, and I forgot, it was short. If you were infantry, you stayed there longer. So the, um, <clears throat> the basic training and the infantry training and the, uh, arm, the artillery training, that all took place? In Camp Pendleton. In Camp Pendleton. You know, they had... Uh, you did some infantry, you know, uh, they had a VC village, they had, you know, a jungle set up, you know, and all that, and where you had to crawl to the barbed wire, and they would let off real, um, they were like uh, sandbags, and I, I'm going to say from you to here, from me to you, <laughs> wow. they, they would blow it up to make it simple. You know, I mean, it was real dynamite that they were, and that's when they used to shoot over you. Yeah. Until a guy stood up once and. Yeah. So that, the, did everybody make it through basic the basic training? Not really. Yeah. Especially when you went to, uh, you had to get your, uh, uh, 
your uh, M14, your you know you get your uh, certification. One guy, because it was like uh, I forgot the distance. There was like a tunnel that went to the targets. All of a sudden, we hear bam. Guy put him because he didn't qualify. And a couple of guys, you know. But he was he injured? Then? No, he well, just he was killed. He, he killed himself. Yeah, he put a gun to his head. Oh, he did it to himself. Yeah. Oh, because he didn't get to make it. Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, there were some guys that wanted to get out. They were taking pills, and you know, not a lot. There was, you know. When you said the M14, uh, that's the one right there. You can see it in there, I think. When you're on this picture here, is that an M14? No, that's an AK. Oh, that's the AK. That's an AK. But in this one, in this one, you're in the training. In the in this. Yeah, that's that's a fourteen that they got right there. So did you, when you, so when you complete uh, the Camp Pendleton experience, did you go anywhere else for additional that, training? That I went to uh, Camp Lejeune. On the other side of the country? Right. Yeah. And, and Camp that's, that's where uh, we got trained some more. And that's where they um, would send you. When you left Camp Pendleton, your next duty station was Camp Lejeune. From there, then they decided, well, you're going, you're going, you're going, you're going here. When you went to Camp Lejeune, uh, did you fly there? Or was yeah. It, yeah. And then when you get to Camp Lejeune, how long do you stay at Camp Lejeune? Is that a long time? Well, I suppose it's it, it should be there. Yeah. I can't remember. It so was, this is more, did you get more training then at Camp yeah. Lejeune? Right. I think it's the 2nd Marine Division. Right, but I think it was like three or four months. It probably will say I left there in May. Yeah. It should say. Did you see it in there? Yeah, there's a lot. I, I'm. Um, I know. Sometimes it's a lot of uh, abbreviations. All right. There. Yeah. Yeah. There's an 18th of May, 67. Yeah. That's when I left. I think. Yeah. See, when I got there, I got your next duty station. Mm -hmm. Or. They said I was going to go to Cuba. Oh, okay. Well, me, I'm only 17 years old. I want, you know, I, and everybody says, no, no, don't go to Cuba. You can't. First, you got to go by ship. The second thing is, it's spit shine. I mean, I, I, I'm in artillery, so 10 to 1, you're going to be doing guard duty, and you ain't going to be doing nothing except. So if you can get it with like spit, yeah. Guantanamo? That yeah, be, yeah, yeah, get one. And at that time, you, uh, you probably just clean the gun, clean this, you don't do anything. And the guys talk me out of it, and I go, what else you got? Oh, you got Vietnam. I said, okay. <laughs> I just, I was 17, you know. That's, that's it. in May. That's, that's got to be the May date I left for, uh, for Vietnam, I think. Yeah. I know it was May. I think it was May. So is that when you become part of Battery C, or? I was in uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie Battery, right. When I got to, what, when I got to Vietnam? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so on the, for the purposes of the interview, we'll have to uh, identify the unit with which you spent most of your time. That would have been Charlie, or? No. Uh, that's coming up. It's, uh, <laughs> I was in food. I got to, to Vietnam. I was with Charlie Battery. I think I was in Fubai for a month. I, I don't know if it's in that one over there or there. This one, it might be here at the top. All yeah. my operations there. Yeah, I participated in the defensive way in Fubai. Right. Yeah. Okay, then we went to Quezon, I think, in June. I think. Is it in there? Uh, participated in Operation Crockett, 14th of June. That's probably, that's why I went to Quezon. Then, okay, <clears throat> when I got to Quezon, you probably see it in, in, in there somewhere.
they transfer it to alpha battery. That's on the, here I'll show you, where's the, sure. where's the map? Okay, if I remember right, yeah. This is, this is where, this is where Charlie, this is where the ammo dump was. That got blown on up. They put me down here, we had one 105 millimeter and I was, I was an 05 battery. But they, the minute I think, I, I can't remember if it was a week or two weeks, they transferred me to Alpha Battery. So Alpha Battery was where you would have been your main unit when you Yes, that was my, that was almost my, from June to April to, to, to the day I left. I can't remember the date that I left. Uh, so that was, Al that was Alpha June. Battery, 1st right. Battalion? Right. 3rd third, third Marine Division. Right. So Alpha Battery. Uh, 113. 113. Right, Alpha Battery 113. Alpha Battery 113. And that's 3rd uh, Marine Division? 1st Battalion. Right. 3rd Marine Division. Right. Yeah. So, um, when you're in Camp Lejeune, was, were there any um, difficult or demanding officers there? Or no, there no, it was, pretty, it was pretty nice. Even in even in Camp Pendleton, it wasn't that bad, you know, because you were, excuse me, you were being trained. Yeah. And then we went there, and that was like nothing. In Camp Lejeune, we had a movie theater out there. I think we even had a, a some, uh, we had like a health club. Yeah, yeah. So, um... You entered the service then in in August of '66, right. and then your the next then your next year you're in February, right. March, and May. You're on Camp Lejeune. Right. So you're starting to wonder where am I going? What's happening? And then you don't want to go to Guantanamo. I'm going to Vietnam. I didn't want. To, I, said, I, I yeah. just you know. And then I got off the plane. And let go. Yeah. yeah. What was that first well, day in Vietnam like? The airplane took a couple rounds, and then they opened the door. Because, you know, on C-130, they put that down, and it was hotter than, oh, you didn't even, you just stood there and you just would sweat, because it was so hot, you know. Far worse than any of the oh. jungle of climates that they exposed you to in the United States, you know. No, it was, it was really, I mean, you just stood still and you just, it would just be. And you landed at Da Nang. Da Nang, yeah. But you went from. It was from California, I think it was Travis Air Force Base in, in California, if I remember. And then you went to Hawaii, and then you went from there to Okinawa. And then you took all your, you got jungle fatigues and that, and whatever your your dress clothes it was put in a sea bag and then left there in Okinawa, which you didn't need. And they just gave you like socks and jungle, you know, fatigues and that. And then they set you up, you going to so and so, Charlie Battery. From there. So, um, did you get from Da Nang to Khe San? That was well, like that was Fubai. I was in. Fubai first. Fubai first. We were there, I think it was like, the, it wasn't that long. A couple of weeks. It might have been a month. Was that by truck or helicopter or? That was by truck. It by wasn't truck. that. It, yeah, it was by. I just, I just trying to pick. Yeah, it was by truck. And then from Fubai to Quezon was by truck. I think it was Highway One. I, I can't really. Yeah. So, but at this time you're you're holding up pretty well. You're. I mean, it's the climate's tough, but uh, oh, you're young that? and you're. A marine and, and you were in artillery, so you didn't have to really do a lot of guard duty. You know what? Right. In Fuvai, we did did very little off and on doing something. We had to do a couple of patrols and that. But in Quezon, it was all it was Arvins, Marines, you know, infantry out there and that were around around the whole base. So, um, being in artillery, you had to be able to operate um, 
a certain number of guns or types of guns? It was guns? a 105 millimeter howitzer. And we had one 5.5 um, five gun artillery piece. It was a 155 millimeter. We had one of those that we had a. This one shows there was a battery, but there was no bat. There was no battery. There was only we only had one um, five five millimeter. It's like an eight inch. It's almost the size of an eight inch gun on a ship. That's how big it is. So, life on Quezon base was that? Did that take some getting used to, or was it difficult? It wasn't that. You know, no. at the beginning when we got up there in June, it was. Like I said, it was you know, we we were <laughs> we were called Party's Pirates. <laughs> Party's Pirates. Who was Party? He was our captain. Was he a good guy? Uh, uh. A little, little weird. We always get you know. It's like you ever watch Mash? Not Mash. Um, yeah, the original Mash where you'd have one guy, he would always get you something. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. And we built a. A club out of ammo boxes and airstrip matting. And I go, where'd you get this from? Well, CVs or whatever the guy did, or you know, we get this and got that, you know. And that was like June, July, August, September, and I think that was October that I met Robert Stack. All of a sudden, we had a big party. Yeah, that's one of the questions. Oh, is, uh, okay. Did you uh, were there were there any USO shows or famous entertainers? No, that was. That was the one, all of a sudden, well, like I said, we were called Party's Pirates. And our first sergeant, <laughs> he, he, was the, he was a lifer, but a nice guy. Our captain was da da da. And I still, I think I remember, we had a big party because somebody took a cake that was supposed to go up. There was a radio, because we were in a, on a plateau, and it was a radio station. And it wasn't us. Somebody stole the cake. And the first sergeant goes, you'd steal Jesus Christ off the cross, and I can't say the word, you'd, be, <laughs> you'd come back for the nails. And I go, we didn't, we're all sitting there, we didn't do it. And I turned around, and there was Robert Stack. All of a sudden, I go, you know, it was, I think it was like October, because we didn't start getting uh, hit I think I'm just I'm, I'm just guessing it, it, it had to be because there was nothing going on at that time. There was nothing until I think it was like November or December. I, I, they started. They had in Laos. They had 152 millimeters, and they were like the Japanese. They would bury themselves in the hill. Well, we had a 155, but we couldn't. Even with the 5.5 five gun, we could, couldn't get the right trajectory to hit them. They could hit us, but we couldn't hit them. Because we couldn't get the right... So you'd have to call in airstrikes or something? They would call on that, but still. Somebody, you know, I, it wasn't up to us. I don't know what. So you started getting shelled on... And somewhere, I want to say... I'm trying to, trying to remember... So how many miles are you from the Laotian border here, do you think? Not far. Not far. Because I know that one paperwork I got there, Yeah. the other one, that one, it's missing one. It's missing uh, an operation I did. I only, all I got left is, I think, two pictures. I had two slides of the Chinook helicopter and our 05 in... Over the border. As... Uh, Cambodia or Laos. I, I can't really remember. They dumped us there for about a month. With one O five in the middle of the jungle. I, I don't even know. And it's it's not in there. Redacted or whatever, yeah. yeah. But so, I think it I think it was there was a a sniper. Um, Carlos Henderson. I think that was his name. He was a big sniper back then and he went after a, a, a general or somebody, big shot. And all the time he was around, we were, and something happened. I read one of the books that he went out and 
he shot this general or some big, big name. I wonder if he survived the war, Mr. Henry. He did. Yeah. But he, I think he, he had complications after that. So even though you're, you're kind of on the perimeter. We're about. Uh, I want to say we're about 10 miles from the DMZ, or say somewhere 10, 10 miles from the DMZ. So even though you're at, like, at Quezon and in charge of these kind of permanent gun... Right. We, but they still send you out on, on missions. That was the only one. That was the only one. That was it. That was the only one that they sent. Don't ask me why, why you would send one gun into the middle of the jungle. And were you able to set it up and yeah. get it operational yeah. out there? Oh yeah, they already had it dug out and everything else. So I. And did you know what you were firing at? Or no, they didn't tell us anything. Just said here. <laughs> so you the coordinates and they just fire they target? just they just stuck it in the. But and did you fire it when you were out there? No. Oh, you never fired it. It was no. just in case. No. And then. Okay, go on, we gotta have any more. Go oh, on. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and the food is still good? You haven't lost any weight or gained any weight? or? Well, after. The, the food wasn't bad. Yeah. It wasn't great. Did you get any R&R? &R? Yeah, I don't. I'll have to go get up to that point. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, well, the food was okay. Yeah. It wasn't, you know. Okay, then, 19, uh, you'd see, it was the Tet, Tet Offensive. Okay, Quezon was the, I, I don't, I, I'm sure I'm quoting it, was the longest battle in Vietnam. It was a 77 day siege of, we were surrounded by uh, four divisions. Was it a surprise? We did, what, no, that tet was all coordinated between the NVA and the VC, VC and yeah. all that, all over. That's why tet on, I forgot what date, I know it was 68. Yeah, January, is it January 68th, January, January 30th, I think. So no, that was before that. Before that. I'm trying to remember, because we had all these, we had a, a like a, a board, mm -hmm. and it would, and the, uh, Guys would go out, the FOs, the forward observer, and they would give you a uh, coordinates. Mm -hmm. And when we got hit, <laughs> the gun was going around and around and around. Yeah, the tight offensive. We, we had rockets coming this way, there were motors coming this way, and then 152s were coming <laughs> this way. And I, I'm surprised I never even got, we had a lot of guys got killed. Yeah. Because the ammo dump, that down, the ammo dump that was down here was Charlie Battery. And they hit the ammo dump. I don't know if you've ever seen the picture. I wish I had, I should have brought it. The, I've seen the picture. The picture, picture of the yeah. guy running at no. Newsweek. Yeah. Where they're running, that was where Charlie, that's the battery I was in. Lucky I wasn't there and they, you know, a lot of guys got killed because the, the yeah. ammo dump blew up and started throwing. But they moved you from Charlie Battery to Alpha. When I first, when I first so, got this yeah. one. So somebody must have been. So then you can see on there, on, no, this one here, right there. You see where I got hit? I think it was January 21st. Right face from an enemy right. mortar at Quezon. Right. 26th of January. Yeah. So 26th? Yeah. Okay, I couldn't remember. I thought it was the 21st. Yeah. That's the whole story. Okay, we said R and R, right? <laughs> I get there back because of the Tet offensive, they were bombing us and the plane they were shooting the planes and they would you didn't manifest. You just got there. I was going to uh Tai Ta Taipei and uh, we got there, blah 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 and the plane just came, they they came in like this, turn, 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 and went and took off. And this Air Force guy goes, well, get the shrimp metal. I'm looking, I'm like, I'm not going to say, I couldn't say to that, but you're freaking nuts. I ain't going there. 
you get shrap metal off the, metal. the, the tarmac right yeah. in front. So I, as the blacks would say, I go diddy bop. And I diddy bop, and that's, they took, and my flat jacket took some of it. And if it would have been an inch more over, it would have probably went to the back of my head. But it just caught me. It's almost gone. It's, it, it was pretty deep, but it's almost, it was right here. But if it had been an inch over more, it could have won. And that was because you were trying to get the scrap metal off the tarmac? No, I just walked away. Ah. I did about this, mm -hmm. as the blacks would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did about the, the mortar went off and got me. So they put this black kid, picked me up, and his eyes looked like, uh, you know, because when you get cut in the face, you bleed a lot. Yeah. I had all the blood. And I, well, we're taken to the doctor, and the guy dragged me to the doctor. And he goes, oh, you want stitches? I go, no, just put the thing on. I want to go on our <laughs> Two of us chased the plane down. The, the plane came in, put, dropped all the ammo and that, and it was going. We were chasing the plane down to Tarman. Sergeant and I got on the plane. Plane turned, took off. You know, we didn't manifest. We didn't even know where the plane was going. Because they didn't. Guess what? Bing, 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 bing. They had a guy, they called him Luke the Gook. Because back when the French were in uh, Nem Van Thu, mm -hmm. the case, they had all their tunnels already dug. And this guy would come out at the end and start shooting at the planes. And he, he got our plane. We had no landing gear. One engine was on fire. And we had to do a belly landing in Dene. And I all had this and I had, you know, I was all... And Denang was like uh, going to downtown Chicago. They had air conditioned theaters, they had good food, you know. We were eating sea rations. My dad's World War II sea rations, I was still eating. Wow. <clears throat> when we got hit, we couldn't, they had to bring everything. Either the plane would come in and they had a, a chute and it would pull the, the pallet out. Mm -hmm. Well, they couldn't do that anymore. So to bring it in, right, let me see. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, over here, I think it says it. They didn't bring my glasses. Oh, yeah, right here. Drop zone. You see right there? Yeah. See what there is that come in? They put the gate down, and I just pull it out and just... We get our ammo and supplies, but we never got that much food. Yeah, it was too too hot. To, couldn't, no, yeah. they, 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 the planes were getting hit. One a Marine Corps was the C 130s were all camouflaged, but the Marine Corps ones were silver. And one one came in and direct hit. It had fuel on it and it just blew up. I got I had some. I, I think I still got some slides somewhere. But one. So you were you were playing an R and R, and then you get hit I get in the hit. face, and then you wind up in Denang. Right. Then we took a plane from there to Taipei. Taipei. And did you get medical more medical treatment? I didn't really. All I had was a patch. I didn't want them. I yeah. didn't want stitches. I don't want. Yeah. So how was Taipei? Was it? It was yeah, a drunk. <laughs> Good beer. Or? I had to go to a show and. I had to go to a scalper because you had these girls. Yeah. And I said, well, I want to go. Hey, they got, a, they got this. I think it was Casino Royale. And I said, let's go see it. She says, well, we got to go get a scalper. Because back then, it was a big yeah. It was a big thing going to the show, you know, whatever. Yeah. So did you get in to see James Bond? <laughs> no? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, we oh, got in. We yeah. got. Yeah. So they, that iron is a. Oh, Three days. Three days. Because yeah. I was only a Lance Corporal. Yeah, so when did you get your promotion? Oh, I forgot. Would that have taken place overseas? It was in case. In case, huh? If you had been a higher rank, say a sergeant, would you have gotten a longer leave? Maybe. Maybe not, yeah. Usually. So uh, when you come back from, from Taipei, then in, in Taiwan, Formosa, then do you. Are you back in the hot in the hot well, place? Well, then I had to get came back in Da Nang, had to get a chopper to fly me in the caisson. 
which took fire too. <laughs> one of the black kids on there, I go, I says, learn this. Uh, it's called a Jolly Brain Giant. It's a big, huge helicopter. And uh, it's only got one blade and a, a, a rotor in the back, but it's, it's, it's a big plane. It's a big chopper. And they got a thing down in the center with all your mail and, you know, it's like a rollers. It's on rollers. And I told the kid, I said, when you get off, be like Jesse Owens. <laughs> Run. Because, you know, we were catching, you know. And then the thing jammed. I started throwing stuff all over the place. And lucky somebody, like I said, so many of us have been watching for me because because <laughs> they knocked down a lot of helicopters. I, there was a lot of, there was a lot of... Uh, so did you, did you mention the siege of Quezon took 70-something days? It was a 77 days siege of Quezon. If you go, you just... Yeah. Just go on your phone and say... Quezon, and you'll see it says it was. I think it was the longest battle in Vietnam. So then, then I came, and the clerk, which I knew, well, he goes, "Well, we heard you got hit." I got there, you know. I said, "Okay, no biggie. I didn't, you know, blah blah blah." He says, "Oh, you're going home for a week." You could see it in there. And somewhere in there it shows I went home for about a week. My grandmother was sick. And you don't come home for grandparents. But my family doctor was military and he knew me very well. So I don't know who he he knew, but he got me home. And then I had to go back again. And but by that time case on was still it was still still going. And then you made a good, a good recovery with the patch yeah. on your... Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, it was deep, but not... It, it, you know, like I said, excuse me, a little bit. So this is, it's like your third time coming back to Quezon or something? Yeah, it's yeah. A, yeah, basically. Yeah. And you're still taking fire that I'm still left. taking... Yeah. I can't remember what date it time or that I got back. Yeah. Or when did I leave? But, uh, February? I think it was February. It should be right in there somewhere. No, it wouldn't. I mean, no, it should be right there. It says. Yeah, the emergency leave okay. was 6th of February, 68. Okay, so I was back in a week. Yeah. And then you. So the siege of Quezon lifts then, and you were able to. No. It... I should have brought the picture. A guy gave me the picture. Uh, April, I think it was April 7th, somewhere. The army was supposedly saved us. It was the Air Force that, that bombed all, you know. I mean, I got pictures, I got, I still got movies of when I got there and when I left. And when I got there, it was all Jungle. The other pictures looks like this table. There was nothing, you know, with the Agent Orange that they sprayed. That cleared out a lot, you know. I mean, you could see for. So Agent Orange was was dropped. Well, to I try don't to relieve the pressure on Kason. Well, maybe they were just doing it. Or defoliating it, you know. It's, you know, there was nothing left. I mean, it was all. I mean, we could watch. We could watch the NVA coming up, you know, mm -hmm. coming up by us. I mean, I got movies of the, I got movies of the jets coming in, the Phantom jets coming. In. I'm sitting on my bunker taking movies. <laughs> so, did uh, was there a friendly rivalry between the Marines and the Army? Well, no, the yeah. Army wasn't. There was only a couple. It was more uh, CVs. It was more of a Marine Corps base. Yeah. The Army they sent up in April. That was the end of the siege. That's, you know, I, I, I even talked to a couple of guys that, that are Army and they're going, no, they just wanted the, uh, the glory, mm -hmm. you know, saying we saved you, but they did. It was almost all over. It was the, the V-52s uh, carpeting, you know, they carpet the area and they just... And were the, v, were the um, 
regular uh, Vietnamese army, they were on the base with you too? The Arvins. The Arvins, they were yeah. there? Yeah. Were they pretty good fighters? Yeah, they were, they were up front. And then you had your Marines, and then we had, you know, then you had the airstrip and everything. But some were not too bright. There's one time we did a fire mission, and they, they caused it right on top of themselves. Mm. <laughs> So, Mr. Tostano, when you're, yes. you're back at uh, Quezon in this, this period, uh... It was pretty I, nasty. You know, like I said, all we, like I said, by the time I left, they started giving us new sea rations. But the other stuff was, was World War II. Well, the Marine Corps always got the, got the... Was the, would, the, the low end. would the shooting take place all the time? Or just, oh, yeah. So was, did that affect your ability to sleep or anything? Or? Well, we had a big, I want to say from there down to here. We, went on, we had tents in that, but when the siege started, we started getting ammo boxes and we started digging everything out by hand. And we, everything was underground. Then, you know, put the airstrip matting, then put sandbags and airstrip matting and sandbags on top. Airstrip matting, what's that like? Is it uh... It's not, it's, uh, it's like perforated, it looks like cheese. And you just you hook them together like this. The ones they didn't need, you know, they got some different ones, some are flat like this, and some had holes. Most of the ones we got, you know, were with the holes in it because they didn't need it. They got new, new stuff. In, in addition to the getting hit in the uh, your right, right cheek, did you uh, did you get malaria or anything like that? Or? <laughs> I'm getting there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you, know, you must be reading my mind. Okay, I came home. I think it says June, around June first, somewhere. No, it should be on this one here. This one? I think. I think it's on that one. Uh, or that one. Yeah, yeah, maybe this one. Yeah, June 68. That was probably around June 1st, I think. Yeah. Wasn't it? June. Transfer. TR. Oh, I know. So this it was, is after the siege has lifted then, is it? Well, that's... Yeah. We were... We went from Quezon down to outside of Da Nang. I don't know. We were near some beach. They called it Wonder Beach. I know mean, it was a couple miles away, but we just had. We were just there until we were uh, set to go home. But we all. It wasn't like a whole group that left. It was like okay, Neil, Jim, Bob. You, mm -hmm. They all. We all left at different times. So when I left, I got to. The name wasn't that far away, so I took a jeep, and I missed the plane. I, I don't know why. I, they said be here at this time, and I go okay. I says, now what do I do? Well, the guy goes, well, there's one of this. It's an Air Force plane. It, it opens in the front. I don't know what the number is. It, it opened the front. Mm -hmm. I says that one's going to whatever Okinawa, and then you can cut something to. Here, there, whatever. I said, whatever. I run up. I, I want to get out of here. You know what it was? A body plane. Oh. So I had to fly. And this plane was a prop plane. It wasn't a jet. So I had a, I was the only one there. They gave me a blanket and I slept on a casket all the way to Okinawa. I think it was like a couple hours, like two or four hours. I, can, I don't remember. That's That part I, I don't. Wow. <laughs> and then I got to Okinawa, then they, they couldn't find my bag. Da da da. So all I had was my jungle fatigues and then they took everything else away from me. I had I had some stuff. Uh, a mm -hmm. Vietnamese MVA uniform I got this that's where I, I got the gun the it came from. I shot the guy. And they just, I said, I don't care, you can I just want to get out of here. And I was all by myself when I got home, so I didn't have to worry about protesters. Nobody 
really paid any attention to a single Marine. You know, and I had jungle fatigues on. You know, that's all I had. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So I get there. That's when I came home. I didn't, I didn't, until August that I was going to get out. My next duty station was Camp, going back that's to Camp, Camp Lejeune. What you just said, I was sitting there. I was only 20. I was sitting with a buddy of mine in a bar. I was going to be 21, but the guy didn't care. It was out in Milwaukee Avenue. And I was, I was sweating. I was going, what the hell? And had the air conditioning on. I go, this is the so. So my grandfather, I said to Gramps, I says, I don't feel good. I got chills, I got a headache, and I got a 101 temperature. I, I, I can show you, I still got all the paperwork from my SRV. Like I said, she didn't get your things like this thick with everything. So I go to Great Lakes, they hand me a couple of pills. And the, and the nurse or guy, nurse or whatever, or whatever he was, he goes, man, why are they sending you home? I went home, and that's why I lived, my mother and my stepdad lived in Morton Grove, and my grandparents and my dad lived here, right here at Niles. All of a sudden, the next thing, I'm, I'm laying in Lutheran General, and I'm looking up. I remember the doctor, Dr. Upson. He was my family doctor. He was military. He was the man that helped you work for your grandmother's. Yeah. yeah. Thank God it was him. How many hospitals would you go in Niles that or Park Ridge that you have malaria or try to figure it out? Because mm -hmm. I had a hundred. I had. I even got the thing. I had a hundred and six temperature Whoa. when I hit. And all I remember is you know like him. Talking and verily, I couldn't see him, I could hear him. He says, Well, you got one or four. There's four, I think three or four, I can't remember, three or four types of malaria. And I had the worst one. He said, If you would have been in the field. So I spent three, almost almost a month in uh, Luther General. Then they transferred me, which was to Great Lakes, and that was, uh, it was, they wanted me to do guard duty. They almost killed me. You know, I stayed, and I, you know, I got better, but they, they, you know, and I went to the first sergeant, I go, I haven't even had enough liberty. You know, I just got back, and he goes, don't worry about it. He took care of it. But if it wasn't for my family doctor, I would have probably been dead. By the time they would have figured out that I had malaria. I mean, he knew right away. Yeah. You know, he's so you're just, in general, just weak. Oh yeah, I lost in and out of everything. For I lost. I was I was pretty well in shape. Yeah. I went from like one sixty five. I lost like twenty six pounds in like six days. But you can see the thing going like this with the medication he was giving me. You can just see your temperature went up and went down, went up, went down, and finally. It leveled off, but he said they're they're gonna be <laughs> dearly. He says I'll be here three times a day. They're gonna have to pay me. <laughs> so that was you're under siege again of a different kind. another kind. And yeah. then I was in uh, Great Lakes for see. That's the only thing is I can't find that paperwork. I got from June to August. Like it was like the last week. What's my Muster out date, August twenty something, twenty first. Is it August twenty first? Yeah. Okay, I had a week between there and there. I can't. The records are somewhere. I don't know where they're at. They could be with the Navy or whatever. And guess what they did? For that one week, they sent me to Camp Lejeune. For one week, they didn't. They could have sent mustered me out here. Maybe they thought I was going to re-enlist or something. I go, ah, ah. You didn't, uh, that's a question that we always have is, did you, did you no. give any thought at that time to no. re-enlisting? No, or? they tried. Not if I went to it in Quezon and all that, and, you know, and then doing this and... So, so, uh, in Quezon you were fired upon. Oh, daily. Many times. Oh, that was... And, um... That was almost a daily... And then you were firing 
there. With artillery, but then also with with your M14? Well, no, no, we with didn't. Rifles and? We really, we were in the middle. Mm -hmm. Like, we were in the, like I said, we were, we were like right here. All we had, they gave us M16, but I didn't. I kept my M14. I just put the M16 away because I didn't like it. It was. You thought the M14 was a better weapon than the M16? Weapon. Yeah, at that time it was. And how did they? How did the M guns compare to an AK-47? Oh, that was you didn't even have to clean it. <laughs> it just. It was a better weapon. It was a better weapon. Oh yeah, you didn't have to clean it at all. And then how did you come by the AK-47 in the picture? Well, the guy was. We were on a patrol, and I. I shot the guy coming through the wire. With an M14. M14. But if you were out in the field, were you allowed to use an AK-47 if there was one nearby? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I had it for a while. And then how would you get more bullets for the oh, AK-47? I had, I had a, this guy had a ton. It was a 7.62 short because the M14 has this one. But the AK, it's, it's called a 7.62 short, and it's shorter. And the guy had, he had loads of, you know, I mean, you couldn't go into the, the jungle with it because a 16 cracks. Cracks. Um, uh, uh, sorry, it, it bangs. When you shoot an, uh, an AR-15, it kind of toot, 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 toot. If you shoot an AK, it kind of, you hear it, it's a different sound. And you don't want to go into the jungle with that. And somebody hears you shoot at somebody, they might shoot you. But we didn't, you know, we didn't do too much. Like I said, at the end, we were kind of put off to the side. Yeah, but you, um, <coughs> it does say that you, you um, participated in Operation Scotland too, and Operation... Um, Rice, and then um, yeah, I don't know what you know, Luke yeah thrust were those. Those were when you were at other places after yeah. Quezon, right? Oh, that was in Quezon. That was still part of Quezon. I think the fight. Do they have the dates on them? Yeah, fifteenth of April, twenty seventh of April. Okay, that that one, that one, that one was probably when we were leaving in April. The the last one, man, man. What did he say it was? Twenty uh, fourth of May. Participated in Operation Manaluke no. thrust. No, what's the one in April? Uh, participated in Operation Scotland too. That's probably the one when we left. In Coin Tree. That's the one we left. I think. I, I you went off the Quezon. That's when we, we left. Deuce and a half truck with the gun in the back and our whole battery left and they brought in another battery. And we went down and it was high, I think it was Highway 1. I, I, you know, I, I'm just going by all that. I don't yeah. you know. I, I, I don't know dates, I can't remember what, you know. Yeah, so um, in this, um, in the, I don't remember this, how many men are in a, in a battery? We had, I'm trying to remember, I think it was like about eight. Yeah. I think it was eight, I'm just trying to remember everybody. That Does was anybody there. else in an Alpha battery suffer any injuries? Or no, no, we were. I was the only one, but see, I was, you know, no, there wasn't, there was a couple of guys killed, but they were on other guns, you know, okay, Sam. and, you know, and our, because mm -hmm. we were in a, um, I think a half moon, I think it was a half moon, because um, they had different. And they would probably be killed by uh, well, one shelf? One by guy shelf. was killed by a uh, uh, RPG, uh -huh. the guy got to the line and. You know. Yeah. The um, so you received um, a Purple Heart. Right. We got two presidential unit citations. National Defense Service. On the right? other one, go on right. the other page there. The other one, that one. I think that one there. That shows you a little bit better. Yeah. The Vietnam Service Medal with wow. two, two clusters. Is it Vietnam Service Medal with two? There's one. Two it says uh, Presidential Unit PUC. Yeah. That's the president. That one should have two two stars. Uh, 
or one star. Mm -hmm. So we got one with that, and then we got a star for, or we got two presidential unit citations. And then you were a rifle, uh, rifle marksman badge. Right. Yeah. And that was with an M14? Or? Yeah. yeah. That was in. See, the red You were saying that, uh, I'm sorry? No. The red one you used, we used to call it the fire watch ribbon. Because when you went into boot camp, when you got out of boot camp, you got a red ribbon. They call it national defense, but we called it the fire watch. Because in Camp Pendleton and that, you had to do fire watch. And what's fire watch? Just, uh, yeah, just, it's like you walk around the barracks, make sure everybody's sleeping, nobody's doing anything, you know. Yeah. Did, um, did they have MPs at Quezon? Yeah. Yeah, but it was more, I, I really don't really remember, you know, because like I said, we were strictly by the base. Yeah. And this terrific color picture here. Yeah, this is... I'm just saying, I think that's... On. And that's yeah. with the AK-47. Yeah. AK and that's the helmet I got where I... The round one, too, was here right now at the back of his head. And then um, all this equipment or anything you would have liked to bring back. Well, you you the, came back on that air... Yeah, I just wanted, you know... I, they took the uniform, they took whatever I had, and I said... And the gun, I gave it to somebody that you couldn't bring it home. Wow. <laughs> somebody, was, somebody was watching over me. I don't know what. But. Um, there's a question here. Um, okay. Do you recall any particularly humorous events? Well, yeah. We used to smoke a lot of pot. <laughs> and this one black kid, he was on, because we had, you sit back and we had like headphones, you know, a speaker. So when you got a fire mission, they would call it in. And uh, I had a coolie hat, and I came up, I watched him he was sitting in his chair like this, and I tapped him on the shoulder, and I thought he was going to turn white. <laughs> he left. He laughed so hard, I mean, you know, I mean, he had nothing else to do. You smoke a little weed. He thought you were the enemy. Yeah. yeah. He just, he was, he wasn't pissed, but he was like, he just, he was like laughing. Go, so did he, uh, did, the, did the officers, they didn't mind people smoking weed? They, they stayed away from us. Because all you had to do was take a grenade and... They, uh, they, they hit. The only ones that came out were like... The first sergeants and the gunnies and that, they were all, they were all... Captain Party wasn't out there. <clears throat> huh? Captain no, he wasn't out there. No. He, was, he was hidden somewhere. And the lieutenant, he, he was good. But this first sergeant and, uh, and the other, the other, I think he was a master sergeant. They were all, they were lifers, but they, they had, when they were going to get out, they had all their jobs and, you know, but they were, you know. So the, and then there, the, everybody else, the, all the, the, smoking the pot. Then uh, was that only in Quezon, or was it in? Well, that was mostly all the time. Yeah, you know? and it not did, all. The, but it didn't not, affect people's ability to function no, or sleep no, or anything else. No, we never had a problem. Yeah. So and how, how did it get onto the base? The the, the pot. The mountain air. I don't know. I I still don't remember. Somebody would find it. Somewhere, somebody had it, <clears throat> because all they had was Martin Yards. By us, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me how, who got what, got this. I, I don't, I really don't remember. Yeah. You know, there was always plenty. No matter, was it, no was it where, expensive weed? No, it was not. Yeah. You know, I mean, we go to any base to go, somebody had something. You know, lucky I didn't go in. I know some guys that came back that were... Huh? Junk uh, and heroin, and I said, "Wow!" I had a good friend of mine. He was, it took him years. Finally, he was able to kick, kick it. it yeah. You know. 
Yeah, so um, they, they kind of dragged out your separation from the Marines. They sent you back to Camp Lejeune for one one week. One, one week. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't kind of end on a high note. And what was good is the uh, company clerk I had, you know, he was really nice. You know, he was really good. We were like we were pretty close, mm -hmm. closely, you know, guys. And my mother goes, "Oh, you got a package." I go, "What the hell is this?" Instead of sending it to Camp Lejeune, he sent it to my house, my purple heart. So he says, he put a note in there, I think, if I remember, or something like that. I didn't want to send it there because they'll make a big deal out of it. Yeah. You know, he says, I, you know, so when I got there, it was like, I'm there, and they're, they're looking at me like, what are you doing here? <laughs> they sent me here for one week. So that, that company clerk, he was in Vietnam? Yeah. Yeah, he was our, our company clerk. Don't ask me how he got the... To send it to my house or what? Yeah. Um, so the, was it difficult readjusting to life after being through all this? Uh, I was glad to be home, you know, after all that. No, I just, you know, there was a little, you know, I wanted to get, I wanted to get married, have a kid right away, and do this and do that, which I, that was a big mistake, but... You know, I knew there was problems along the way because of I, I. It took me like I was telling uh, what's that, Judy? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it took me almost seven years. I mean, I filed. I put it in the registry for Agent Orange, but they did the same thing. I go out to Heinz. They took something out of here and here, and never heard from them again. They they checked my prostrate that time and nothing, you know. They just said, okay, you're done. When did you think that this, uh, when, did you know they were using Agent Orange when you were? Oh, yeah, but I just, you know, I, like a lot of the vets, a lot of them I just got discouraged and just, you know, I finally got a, a, <clears throat> a good job. I was unemployed. I did have a couple, couple months drinking, no no drugs or nothing, but just, you know, just, I, I was just having, I didn't realize it at that time, post-traumatic stress order was in fact there in the 60s. Yeah. You know, into the 70s, you know, there was nothing, you know, and I, you know, well, I got divorced and, you know, blah, 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 and I, like I said, I was a little on a bench. <laughs> yeah. You didn't, um, Was there, a, was there a GI Bill then or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. And I did a couple of things, but I just, maybe that's why the, I couldn't concentrate on anything. I tried something, and I tried some uh, this and that, and it just didn't. Yeah. And, uh... Well, you're under, you're under such a pressure cooker well, at Quezon, and it's... Well, and that, and, you know, with the malaria, and then this, and, you know, and... I got divorced after a couple of years. I had a kid and all that. And, <clears throat> and so one day I was standing in an unemployment line in Evanston, and a guy like you walked up. I still remember it. I, some names, I don't know, with the military and something, some things they stick in my mind, and some things I can't remember. And his name was Silverman. And he goes, come here. He said, see that lady in that office there? Go and see her. I said, okay. You want a job? I go, yeah. I says, I, you know. And uh, she says, go to the Warman Township Administration Building in Skokie, District 2. It was the Circuit Court of Cook County. And I ended up being there 24 years, thanks to this guy. You know, and it kind of turned me around. I mean, I did some things. I, but it was the same thing all over again. So that you're working for the local, you're working for the courthouse there? Yeah, the Circuit Court of Cook County. There used to be the one here in the police station, mm -hmm. but that was District 3. 
I was in District 2, that was in Skokie. Well, it was literally down right by the Skokie police station down there. Did you, um, did you stay in contact with any of your uh, wartime buddies after no. the service? Because I left, see... You left on your... Yeah. I, we all left at different times. Only one guy, I saw him when I was in Great Lakes, James McFarland, and I cannot, I tried everything, I cannot locate him. We even get a, see, we get this, it's called, in case I, it was red. The clay was red. I mean, I can still, I got a book that I had, you can still smell it. Because it was just that distinct. So this red, red That's clay. a magazine I huh? get. I get, uh, uh, about every three months. It's just for guys that spend time in Quezon. These are all, they give you a, a directory and everything. So. So then, uh, it was, it was, different and difficult for the Vietnam veterans and then uh, so you didn't join a veterans organization or anything? No, I was kind of... Yeah, I've heard that. Kind of groups and that, I don't know, I just, you know... Was right. there a, so there weren't any reunions then, were there? Or, or no, really, no. no. I just, I don't know why after that, like I said, I never, I, I, I scuba dived a lot when I was younger and I had years in it, you know, and somebody tried to get me in, I got not. I don't, I don't like, I just, I don't know, maybe it's, I have no idea why, I just don't like being with a group of people. You know, I don't want to be dictated or even like I write a Harley. They got all these groups. I went to one meeting, I go, eh, eh. no. When did you ride that, did you ride a Harley motorcycle before you went into the I had service? a Triumph. A Triumph. I had a Triumph before I went in. Then years later, I got a a Norton, and then I I've been riding Harleys ever since. So um, the fact that you don't care for these big groups, then so you no. don't you don't do those like Marines rides for tots. And no, I get oh, oh yeah, I do the toys for tots. Oh, you do? Oh yes, I do. I do that every year. I don't I don't go in the parade like I used to back in the old days when. It was one parade, now it's all, it's just run, it's run terrible. And I just do it for the kids, for the toys. Because my wife works for Walgreens, and she gets toys that are, you know, on sale, or mm -hmm. they got to send back, or whatever. So we, I just get a bunch of toys, because it's for the kids. I, you know, but I did it for years, the toys for tots. I don't do the other thing, because I don't want to be riled, because I, <laughs> I was once in a parade with the circuit court and somebody said something about the Marine Corps or something and I involved what I they had to hold me back to go after the guy. You know, so Yeah. So um I sense we're coming to the end of the interview. Okay. Uh, this is a tough this is a tough question. How do you think your military service and experiences affected your life? I don't think it, well, like I said, now, now, thanks to a buddy of mine, I went to high school when I had this cancer, he was trying to get me, I go, and I, I just, that was 2010, and I filed, yeah, I filed then, he finally got me to go see a, a doctor, a psychiatrist, you know, he says, go do this. Go do this, do this, and this. And, well, like I said, it took me seven years to get the seventy percent. So I finally got that. When you say seventy percent, that's seventy percent disability. Yeah. Based on Vietnam service and yeah. and the Agent Orange no, exposure. No, no, no. Post traumatic stress. Post traumatic stress. I get seventy percent, which not bad. I mean, I rather had the, you know, but I, I knew there were problems, but, you know, since I saw the doctor and the woman at the Department of Veterans Affairs, blah, 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 why didn't you get anything? She says, I'm going to refile this. And I went from zero to 70. 
I don't have to pay uh, real estate tax because I'm at 70%. And medications, I don't have a lot. I, they take care of that. I don't have to pay for that. And now I got the prostrate, which put me at 100%, but they don't give you 170. They do it certain circumstances if you file the right things. That's with the governor. You gotta, yeah. you gotta keep. They deny you, then they, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. Like I said, it took me seven years, and I get a check. I get a nice check from them, and I get a pension check. I got no bills. I mean, yeah, the military. I mean, to this point, the post traumatic stress and the, and the prostrate. I'd rather have. You know, I mean, I probably wouldn't have, if I don't went to get Paul, I wouldn't have probably had these problems. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, um, how do you think your military experience uh, influenced your thinking about war or about the military in general? Well, I went into the military. I volunteered. I mean, you know, like any guy now, you know, I was just doing it to... I mean, I wouldn't, right now, these guys, I mean, I had it bad, but these guys now that, that are going to Afghanistan, and that, that's, yeah, that's, that's, it's brutal, you know, it's brutal, you know, and I, I met a couple guys that, you know. Yeah. Pardon me for, um, the, did you mention, does it, you had a cancer yeah. man in the, in the face? In my jaw. In the jaw. Was that as a result of Agent Orange? They said no. That wasn't their criteria. When, like I said, Judy went, all you got to do is uh, go in and there's a certain criteria. If there had been here in my throat, yeah, but it was my dental assistant, my dentist, she found it in the back of my molar. So they had to replace all this, they had to take a bone out, then I had an infection, then they had to take a vein out of here. And put it in there. Oh, and I missed one thing. Camp Lejeune, the water's been contaminated for the last 60 years. So I got another, I got to file another claim. Because I think I got neuropathy or something. I, and I was there. You saw her for three months in the week. And the water's been contained. All you got to do is go and Google it saying Camp Lejeune water contamination. In the last 60 years, the water's been contaminated. Now they only got a little, like I said, the government only puts so many things down at a time. Well, this, this, this. So, that's why I told her, you know, yeah, I should have done it sooner. You know, I tried back then in the, in the 80s, and I still got the same thing. You know, sort of a runaround. You know, it was bad. Now it's now it's a lot better. I go, I see, I, I won't see a VA doctor. I got my own doctors. Every doctor that I have is at Lutheran General. And I got a PA, a physician assistant. She's better at the VA. She's better than any doctor. And she's the one that found my, uh, my PSA level was up. And she says, you better go see. She says, I, I got a doctor over here on Golf Road at 12. She says, go see Dr. Lee. I didn't say nothing to her, so I must, I must throw out a, a something that people know that I didn't have to say one word to her that I didn't want to be a doctor, and it came right out of her mouth saying, here, go see Dr. Lee. And So she's another uh, kind of an angel like that uh, no. Mr. Silverman or whatever. Yeah, she's yeah. just, I happened to get her. Don't ask me. I didn't get a doctor. I got a physician. She, you know, she told me, "Don't even go and get the physical by your doctor. I'll take care of you with no problem. I'll, I'll give you all the tests that you need." My doctor wouldn't have found it. You know, it might have been too late by the time he found it. Um, <clears throat> anything else? <laughs> Is there anything that you'd like to add that we haven't covered in the interview? No, oh, I think you've covered real, pretty you much everything. Yeah. I don't know what else, you know, there was, like I said, I, 
I retired at uh, 55, you know, with the circuit court, 24 years in. So I think that helped me when I, when it, I saw Mr. Silverman and I got the job. And I said I had a good sort of, I thought, oh, this is, yeah, this, and it got, things got better. And I, like I said, I was standing there and I think that's what helped. Yeah, helped steady things. Yeah. And, yeah. But, uh, it, you know. Well, yeah, when you look back at everything you, you've been through in uh, 77, that case on, it's. Uh, well, that, you know. It's, it was a big, it was like I said, it was a. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the Tet Offensive was really something. Right. Yeah. But that's. Kason was all you got to do is Google. Yeah. Kason, the, you know, it'll show somewhere the seventy-seven day. I think I think it was, and in Kason, I don't know if I'm right. I think there were more bombs dropped on Kason than all of World War Two. Wow. So that's another thing. I, I'm positive. I know that. I I remember it was something like. They had a couple of things, one saying, oh, you saw the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, whatever the, the tonnage was mm -hmm. of the, the TNT. Um, I saw a couple, if you just Google it, I, I, I don't remember where I read it, but it, I know they did, because the B-52s were going my whole time there, so, you know. Well, Mr. Toscano, thank you for. Uh, oh, thank you. A very enlightening. Uh, a very enlightening <laughs> I think I'm a little bit more than the normal uh, yeah. guys you're getting in there. Yeah. It's, uh, and if you need anything else, just tell me. I mean, I could, you know, I don't think I got anything else that you would. Yeah, if I have any uh, follow up questions or I'm uh, missing something, I, I certainly will contact you and then we'll. Uh, it's going to take me a while to transcribe. Oh, just it's take, take. It's going to take a while. But then you'll read it and correct it, and we'll get we'll get there. Oh. Uh, and if you want to add something to it, that's okay too. I mean, we've had some vets that they go, home. and I was telling my daughter about, and she said, "Dad, did you tell them the time about that?" So I think I got. We went back well, and put it in. Like I said, I remember more about that over there. I mean, there were more. But you're such a uh, impressionable age, and you're you know you're well, just 17. alive to everything. Well, you know, you're in the Marine Corps. <laughs> you know. Here in Jarhead, you know, it's like, you know, okay, I'm a Marine, you know, I didn't, uh... And uh, you still feel that once a Marine, always, always a Marine. Always a Marine, yeah. yeah. Like I said, we meet all the guys on Tuesday. And it's, it's uh, like I said, there, it's very enlightening that, you know, I'm not, you know, mm -hmm. now I had to, my buddy from high school saying one that got me in with this again, with these guys at the Dunkin' Donuts, then I ended up two more guys. One guy loaded the truck for my dad in 1961 for Illinois Bell, right down on Waukegan Road. He used to be there, the supply division. Roger, you met Roger? Oh yes. He he used to be my um, next well one yard down and my neighbor. But he loaded the truck in 1961. My dad was a driver. Yeah. And then the. Evanston, where I started my first day on the job in 79, the bomb, they were going to bomb the building, the FLAN. Well, the commander now, he lives, he wasn't a commander, he was a, a he lived down the street from me, 10 houses, I never even knew it. And then another guy, another Evanston police officer I met, there were two Chicago cops that I knew. I mean, it was kind of weird going into this, thinking you're not going to know anybody. And you ended up, all of a sudden, oh, this guy, oh, yeah, I know that guy, oh. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it was Mr. McGill that uh, told Roger. me about it, yeah. And Carlos, was it Carlos, Carlos yeah. too? Yeah, yeah. he's a Chicago retired, retired. police officer. Yeah. yeah. Well, Mr. Chiscano, thank you for your service, and thank you thank for being here, and we'll see what you can do.